Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, uh, back with another A500 Rev3. This is from the same great guy who uh, gave me the uh, previous one you saw in the previous video. That was a Rev3 as well. This one's not got any chips on it whatsoever. There's one or two pins that look like they need cleaned up, but actually the sockets look uh, largely okay. You know, the Agnes socket here, I'm not seeing any damage there. So I think we'll take the chips off the board I've previously fixed, fit them into here and uh, have a go at fixing this one. So just inspecting around the board you can see uh, there are a few uh, horror uh, events have happened. Look at this here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, had a bit of a crack. So someone's been tinkering with this, I think, to try and fix this. It's also lacking the joystick ports uh, and the mouse port. You know, look at the state of that there. Too much heat, I think. And, uh, ooh, scary. <sighs> Yeah, look at that, that's horrific. But uh, the pads kind of look like they're there, I mean the traces are there, I can always just fix those. That isn't the end of the world. Uh, under here, yeah, that chip there, someone's already got removing that. The pads are a little bit mangled, let's say, but again, they look like the pads are there. So I think what I would do is I'll remove these two. I might start doing that actually. Uh, socket them up. Obviously I have to replace the LS32 here. Um, just notice that, can you see? Edge of the IDC connected there for the floppy drive, two pins missing, so I can connect, uh, you know, replace, uh, put a, a two pin header there, straighten out the uh, one or two pins that are a bit bent. So it's got this factory mod here where Commodore had broken that trace and then joined up to the uh, VCC pin of the 74245 underneath. Um, but it hasn't got the thing here where, I forget where it was, but I think it was this trace here. This trace has not been broken. Got some damage here, can you see? Via, if I just flip this over, you can see something black and stuck on there. I think that's a bit of a wire, maybe. So something was soldered onto there at some point. Those are the only things I think I can see with this board. I mean, there's obviously a few things there to do. But, uh, yeah, so I'll start with these. I'll start with these. I'm going to use hot air. I'm just going to get the hot air on there. Just use hot air to remove these and then try and clean up the pads, socket them, and uh, get the chips in there. And for the eagle eyed, you'll spot that cap there's broken, so yeah, it's a good job I've got some of those from uh, previous 500, so we can replace that while we're here as well. But that's exactly why I took those caps off that board, and in fact, the other three boards are going for recycling, but I've still got one here, because I kind of felt bad, <laughs> it sounds silly, but I've kind of felt bad throwing that away when it had uh, 16 uh, decent caps. Well, this is one or two of those uh, greeny blue ones as well that I'll remove from there, but... I'm just going straight for it with hot air, not even remove any of the solder from the other side. The reason being is because the pads are so mangled underneath that uh, I suspect I'll just make a mess of it. I think the reason that's broken is because somebody's obviously tried to remove it. You know, they tried to prise it off there before all of the solder's been removed. The other thing I would say is I've seen an example recently, you probably you won't have seen it yet, an A2000 motherboard where someone's used hot air and they haven't used controllable hot air, I can tell that. The, the board is charred, they've used uh, a wallpaper stripper. So when I say hot air, don't just go and get a blooming wallpaper stripper by yourself, something like an A10 858D, which will be about 60 to 70 pounds, maybe cheaper than AliExpress, um, and use something like that because it's temperature controllable. I've set this a bit higher than normal, 415. You know, you might typically want to go around the 350, 380, maybe just under a 400 degrees mark. Um, and as I've described before, it's often worth pre-eating around the area, you know, at two or 200 degrees-ish, you know, like that for a few minutes, you know, the wider area, before you do this, because you can delaminate boards by putting too much heat in too quickly. Kind of get in there, look. There we go. So you can see that first one was kind of a breeze, really. It came off easy. It's in two bits. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. There we go. So now we've got them off, I'll unblock them, and I'm just going to unblock them with the, the desolder pump here.
There you go, you can see that's not too bad and the pads uh, are looking okay there actually. We've got a socket on, that one will be okay. Yeah, so these ones are a little bit more mangled. Uh, I'm going to add some fresh solder. I mean, I say mangled, they might actually clean up okay, but some of these might, pads might be actually be missing, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I'll clean it with some IPN cotton buds now, super carefully. Uh, I'm going to deal with that jumper next before I fit these sockets, I think. We'll get the, uh, you know, the IDC connector fixed here. So I'll just uh, gently clean around these with the uh, cotton bud and some IPA. Yeah, that one's looking alright, actually. That one's looking sweet. And this one, mm, yeah, not too bad. That side there, no real issues, actually. It's mostly just a bit of uh, crusty solder around there that made me think that looked horrendous. Although there is the odd pin here, and that one, that third one, um, and the fourth one, that have barely got anything left of them. So on the top side we've got some more damage. I've removed a bit of solder from there with a bit of dissolder braid, but you can see here, the, this I think it's the, where's that? It's the ground. The ground connection which is joining up to a pin over here, it's mangled. Someone's pulled the copper, you know, they've levered it at that point and damaged the copper. So if I can just cut, sort of straighten out the bit that's folded over there, I can just solder I think on the side and join that back up. Yeah, there's like the smallest gap now between the top part there, just flatten that down a bit, and the bottom part. So I think I'm just going to just cover that in solder and try and get a join. Once I've got a join then I'll get the socket on. So I removed the cap there just by heating and uh, pulling it through. You can see we've got a little bit of solder here, and if I just measure, you'll see we have a join there. So we can now get that socket on, correct with the notch to the right, flip it over, so we just want to again solder diagonally opposites. We'll just do that one there if we can. A little bit of solder is all we need. A little bit over there. It's hard because I'm using one hand. Just flip it over, straight and flat, which it is, and we'll solder the remaining points. So as you can see, you got both the sockets on there. There was nothing particularly uh, taxing or challenging about that. I used slightly much more solder here. I don't, you can see, I haven't cleaned the flux off yet, but the big, bigger the blobs, just because one or two of the pads were so bad. But uh, yeah, I think that'll be okay once that's cleaned up. So I've got a replacement cap here that I'm going to fit now. This is one of the ones we reclaimed off one of those 500 uh, motherboards that someone broke up. Uh, still makes me sick thinking about that now. Because look at what I'm doing here, you know, this is, you could argue that this could be used for spares, but actually I think I can get it working. Why would you not try and get it working? Especially with it being a Rev3 as well, actually, you know, Rev3s are super rare. This is the first Rev3 I've seen, and I've had a fair few of these to look at over the years. One thing I would point out before I sold it in place, it's not exactly the same size. These ones here are 100 nanofarads, I think they use like 204s or, uh, you know, 220, uh, sorry, 224s, 220 nanofarad over here or 330. So it's got a 220, so yeah, it, but I mean, it, it just looks better. It really isn't that important in terms of size, it just needs to be uh, around that region. So 220 should be okay. Yeah, there we go, that's alright. You can do with a bit more solder over here. Might just uh, solder the top side with a bit of flux on. So, looking at that IDC connector next, before I fit these chips. Technically I can leave that till the end, because we ain't doing anything with the uh, floppy drive at the moment. But I think I'll just clean these pads up here. Uh, I'm going to get the fiberglass pen onto there as well, because they look a bit crusty on this side. Just see if I can see what's going on with regards to the pads. Yeah, I think they're going to be all right. The other thing I've just done is just use the cutters here to trim the edge of the plastic a little bit because there was, you know, it wasn't unevenly cut. Someone's split it and cut, you know, cut it and split it there. So the next thing we can do here is uh, just try and fit this. I think we're going to need to unblock the holes because it kind of looks like there's a bit of solder there to me. There is a pin missing here. I'm just going to just check to make sure that second pin is not used. Can you see? If you look on this side here, 
pin is actually missing and I've got vague recollections of it having a pin missing there but I just want to just compare to the other ones just in case we need to replace those two pins as well that's all right the second pin is missing I've just checked on an A2000 motherboard actually so it's not like they've pulled it out it's uh, it's not it doesn't need to be there yeah I'm gonna need to trim or melt the plastic part because it's can you see it's pushing the pins to the left like that so instead of being straight up it's kind of like pushing it to the left a bit so let's just pull that back out if we can, I can get the blooming thing out now. There we go. Um, and what I'm going to do here is uh, actually just uh, touch the plastic with the iron. Coming from this side, try not to touch that socket. Because you can melt these ever so slightly. And then I can get the cutters onto it here just to tidy it up a little bit. It'll leave a streak of solder on as well if you've got solder on the tip of your iron. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's see if that's any better. Yeah, hopefully you can see. Can you see that now? It's pretty much pointing straight upwards. You know, the pins next to it are super bent. Let's just try and straighten those up because it's just going to help us understand whether it needs more adjustment or not. We we'll just grab this pin here if we can. Just bend it upwards a little bit. It's still crooked. Try and straighten that one as well. Yeah, they are pretty bent, those, aren't they? Still needs more, look. And again. Yeah, there you go, that one's straight now. Let's straighten this one. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. Uh, are they about the same height? They feel shorter, actually, you see that? These are longer pins. Anyway, it won't matter too much. The IDC cable will make a good fit. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. It will be a bit shorter than the pins next to it, but it will make a connection. That's look, that's going to be good enough, I think. So that's that dealt with. I don't know if you can see. They are perfectly in line and stuff. They, these two look a bit bigger. They're not. They're just silvery or goldish on top, you know, which makes them look slightly different. Uh, and they don't stand up quite as high. What I did do is push them through from the other side. So there is, uh, you know, a flush with the ones that are there because they were stuck up a little bit which has given them a little bit more height but still they're a millimetre or two off the height of these ones but they'll be fine this one here was for the ports wasn't it so we'll stick that one back in the one that was broken is the LS32 we'll get a new one of those in uh, the final thing I think we need to do before we plug all the chips in is deal with this here because um, I think the wire on the other side is you know, where it goes to the trace is broken so we'll desolder that and try and just make sure it's joined to the trace that goes next to it. I, I suspect it's not, so I might have to just put a piece of Kynar across there. So I just heated and used the cutters there to lift that little bit of wire that was hanging out of that one, and I've reflowed all four of those just because they were looking, well, one or two of them were looking a bit crusty. So I'll inspect from this top side to make sure they're okay, but assuming they are, we just need to fix the trace on the other side because the wire, you know, where that black piece of wire was or whatever, is. Uh, it's not joining up to the trace. I do think it's been broken. That's probably why a wire was on here. Yeah, you might be able to see what I mean here. Can you see there's a little bit of the trace silverish looking there? I'm not sure it's connected to that wire. Let's just test it. You never know. It might work. This might have been something to do with some sort of RAM mod or something that someone had done on this. No, it's not joined, look. So what I'm going to do here is again clean this side with IPA and cotton board. Uh, and then I'm going to use a piece of Kynar from, and I'll get some flux on there, a piece of Kynar from that trace to that little wire. It'll be super small wire there. Yeah, that's about as close as I can get you. Um, if we just use a bit of uh, solder here to I'll try and get the solder up at the right angle here, try and tin this uh, wire up here. You can see I've you know, removed the covering off that. So we've got that nice and tinned now, I think. And what I'm going to do is. I'll do it from this side and I'm going to try and get both of these to join at the same time if I can, like that. Easier said than done. Oh, what's happened to that? Let's just get some flux onto it. Yeah, this is a classic example of why you need flux. Because the, the, believe it or not, the solder will stick to the PCB even though there's nothing to blooming for it to stick on to. I 
cannot see what I'm doing here. I think that's it. I think that's it. So I'll just uh, measure on continuity, inspect it super close, clean up and then just cut it off at the point where it joins the wire. Yeah, so there you are, a super small spot repair. You can see the two traces next to it have got a bit of solder there, you know, this is where someone had worn it off originally. But I think that's okay, the main thing is it's joined up now. So without further ado, I will fit all of the chips. So I haven't taken any chips off my other boards, these are the last remaining spares I have, I have no spares now. As I've been going through these different boards, so I've got CPU on here, that, Agnes, uh, Rom Agnes, Paula, Gary. The Gary is the crusty version from the A2000 you saw me do previously, Rev4, so it's got a bug in there, but it will work, so uh, we'll have that in there. I haven't got another CIA, I can borrow one from one of the other boards, but we've got the one here that's important to boot. Um, and the normal Denise. Uh, now I know all these chips are good because these have been tested previously. I've got a HC32, I didn't, couldn't find an LS32, but a HC32 in the original chip there. I'm hoping we've not got crazy issues like we had. Oh no, look, that's working. I think that's booted. So we'll see if it comes up with the uh, kickstart icon. There, you know, workbench, stick your workbench disc in. And if it does, yeah, oh, there we go, fantastic. I'll uh, populate that missing CIA with one of the ones from my other boards I've been working on. And we'll just connect a floppy drive up and see if this works. So the floppy drive is precariously uh, isolated with this piece of plastic here. So the fix to the IDC connect is okay. Now we're lacking control ports, so I can't connect a uh, mouse up. I'm just going to plug the keyboard in, that'll reset it. Um, we'll see if we can use the keyboard here just to choose the RAM test when it boots again. And the next thing we'll do, uh, test all. Yeah, hoping that passes. Looks like it, yeah. Assuming that works okay, I'll uh, fix the mouse and joystick ports next, I think. We'll clean them up first, and then I'll have to find some replacements. This is one of those things where I keep spotting things that I didn't spot the first time around. Look, we've got a pin missing on the expansion port. So I'll do the same thing with that. You saw me reclaim one of these from a motherboard previously. Uh, that was just a piece broken off, there were a number of them. One of them was not a full height, it was it had some pins missing. So I'll just do the same thing. We'll just trim off two pins on the end. Uh, in fact, I might just do four and replace a block of four, you know, because it gives it strength then. You've just got two on their own, they could get bent a little bit easy. Whereas if you've got a block of four here together, the pin's got support from the pin next to it, if that kind of makes sense. So I'll desolder the three or four pins there for these uh, last two uh, things here and uh, trim off one of the other bits and stick it on. So I removed the solder on those four pins there, just going to, you know, grip them and wobble a little bit like this, try and get them off. There's not much of the pin there to grab actually, which is uh, making it difficult. But if we wobble like that a number of times, yeah, I can see that we're moving on the other side, so it must be loose, I think. And we bring the cutters in, and what we want to do is snip off here, like that. There we go. So hopefully, with a bit of wiggling and manipulation, these four pins should come out. There might still be a bit of solder on the top sides on these ones here. Now that one's out, look. See if we can do the same with that one. There we go, do the same with that one. Come on, there we go. So you can see we've got that. Yeah, so I'm sorry that was off camera. I managed to just pull those out with the pliers there. So there's a bit of solder on the top side there. I'll just uh, use the solder pump to clean up this side as well. So you can see the partial connect here. This came from one of those A500 motherboards that I uh, reclaimed the parts from. Uh, so we need to carefully snip off a block of two here. Like that, you see that? So I'll put that away for future use. And we can just carefully uh, slide this into position here. Might need to trim the plastic down there or file it or something, use a knife on it. But we should then be able to get this in position here, look. Yeah, it just needs a bit of an adjustment. Again, the pins are longer on here, look at this. But it won't matter, it won't matter. Um, I'm puzzled as to why they use much longer pins on these early boards than the uh, later ones. So there we go, solder those pins in position, they are totally in line, they're just not as long, you can see that, they are just not as long. 
But uh, I'm going to go give this a try uh, as well now, I think. We've got one or two pins there that just still aren't perfectly straight. That one's a little bit bent. Yeah, for the most part, they're not too bad. Uh, there's one there that doesn't kind of look right. It looks a bit weird. Yeah, the alignment's okay there. Strictly speaking, I could replace the whole connector there, because I do have some spares of these. But the shorter ones... Um, and I'm just trying to get a quick fix on this really. It's the same with the IDC connector back here. You know, I could replace both of these with new connectors entirely. Uh, but I'm just going to show you ways of fixing things with, you know, odds and ends you've got really. So testing the expansion around there, you can see we've got a half mega slow. No problems at all, it works. Um, the length of that pin is not a problem. Because, it, you know, the board still goes all the way, uh, you know, right up to the edge of the, the 500 motherboard there. So. It's not an issue. It's not an issue at all. The length of those pins aren't an issue. If it was an issue, you would have a problem fitting one of those memory expansions to a standard 500 board that's got the slightly shorter connectors, you know, the later revisions. So I'll echo some comments from previous videos. The next things you might want to do to this, you might want to swap out the single wipe sockets for, you know, dual uh, wipe sockets or turn pin. Turn pin's preferential. Um, and can you see this cap here? It's domed. Yeah, that is domed. So I'm going to swap that cap out now. Um, I'm not going to recap all of these. I can't recap every single thing that I come across from my own collection here. This is just going to be a spare board that's going to be in my collection. So I'm not really sure what the uh, the video mod was. So at the back here, you know, there was a cut and a wire to hybrid. Um, this board doesn't seem to need it as it is at the moment. But uh, yeah, if you know more about that, post in the comments down below. Anyway, we'll get this. Uh, anyway, we'll get this cap off now. So if I flip that over. It's, uh, yes, these solder points here as far as I can see. We'll just uh, heat it and pull it through, I think, and then I'll unblock the holes. One thing I would say about these oh, Rev3 boards, look at that, it came off super easy. The Rev3 boards are the easiest to work with compared to the later boards. The reason being, there's nowhere near as much ground and uh, VCC stuff on the board. But that cap was super easy to get off. Yeah, you can see, it's kind of domed there. Smells alright, but uh, yeah, anyway, I would swap that out. And there is a bit of discoloration around here, which makes me wonder if that has leaked at some point. I'll clean up around there with the uh, cotton bud and some IPA. Since they're exactly the same batch and the same brand, I thought it makes sense to swap them both. I've got red dots on. I'll just mark this up at the end to say it's partially recapped with a red dot. Uh, we'll just squash that down there. Can you see it's been lifted off there, that ground piece of the uh, connection? So anyway, that's back down. It will obviously hold in place through the other side when the solder's on there. But that's looking better already. So I'll get some IPN cotton buds and clean these up. All the pads have gone from here, as you can see. Um, and I, I, it's going to be a similar thing under here, but some of these might just be salvageable. You can see this area's kind of sunk in. There's just way too much heat being used on that. I'm going to be super gentle here because, let's say, there's going to be bits just barely hanging on. So it's looking a little bit better after cleaning it up. What I'm just doing here in advance of the uh, new connectors arriving is scratching this because the PCB becomes carbonised. You know, I'm scratching in between where the uh, pads are. And this one's still got some of the pads there. The one over here, we've lost the majority of them, I think, and the connections that go to them. But, but because these filter things, I forgot what they're called now, um, it's like a cap and an, uh, an inductor in one package, that's why there's three pins. But the, the, the connections go through those, so it's super easy to just have a wire, you know, to have short wires. I can use Kynar to do it, really. Uh, there's a big blob of solder there from when someone was desoldering this. They got some solder, so I can clean those up. But, yeah, nevertheless, what I'm doing here is scratching the PCB itself to get rid of the crusty, melted, carbonised bits here. This is something that a tip that I learned from Arcade UK, actually that you need to clean up these sort of things like this super well. Use a fiberglass pen, maybe even a wire brush, depending on whether you can get away with it or not, um, on the, the carbonised bits, you know, the blackened, in this case it's looking just kind of light, light brown now, but I think we're going to be okay, I think we're going to be able to fix this, uh, one of the pads there is a bit loose look, but I think we're going to be able to fix this and use this without an issue. <sighs> Yeah, so I can't get you any nearer than that, but you can see that's looking a lot better. It's still an absolute mess. 
Uh, I'm just doing this just to reshape the uh, through hole because they've been, you know, the, the, where the pad is on the surface, they've kind of been twisted and pressed to the side a little bit. And at the same time, it's just unblocking it because there's bits of fiberglass from the brushing gone into those holes there. But yeah, I think you can see that, uh, you know, we've got a bit of a pad here. The pad's missing there, but you know what? Like I so said, we can just follow this and have a wire from there to there. Uh, same with that one, same with that one, same with that one. These two, they're barely making a connection there, so I'll, I'll reinforce them. You know, I'll solder them on the points there, but then uh, scratch off a little bit here and have a little piece of kynar just going around there, so it's got a little bit of an extended thing, and I'll loop the kynar around these. Anywhere there's going to join it on, loop it around the pin to make a nice, good, reliable connection. Um, same on that one um, and then on this one they're mostly okay but again I'll just reinforce some of what that one's got a pad missing um, and these aren't great so again I I'll just have some wires short wires go from there to there again wrapped around each one that's going to be super easy to deal with the main thing is because the anchor points are still here the connectors are going to be well and truly you know held in place if you like by these so any kind of wobbling on the connector and stuff it's not going to matter too much you know it's not like they're going to break off they would do if you just solder that little bit there you know with use plugging it in and out in and out in and out that little bit of solder there will break off whereas if you've got you know if you scratch off as i'm going to do scratch off here a little bit and then have kynar that follows around there and joins wraps around the pin when you wobble the port there the worst thing can happen is it breaks on that little point but it's still joined to the solder point which goes to a wire that goes over here do you know what i mean so it'll be fine it'll be absolutely fine that's totally salvageable well i'm glad it's not just me but uh, nobody spotted in previous i think it was one of the first videos in the series here when i was working on these 500 and 500 pluses and i was resoldering the power connector and uh, i'm pretty sure it looked like this and i was like resoldering these connections here this is the choke you know all right yeah they could be technically you get dry joints there because you connect power connectors here and you wobble the power connector you could get some bad solder joints there but the actual power connector solder points are down here so i think in that video that was a mistake uh, i just didn't realize at the time and uh, as i say nobody pointed that out <laughs> he said like, i don't know seven thousand views or something or five thousand views and no one's noticed so yeah the points there the choke the points here are actually for the power connector yeah so one or two of those pens are a little bent but i think it's going through yeah there you go it's going to be raised up a little bit perhaps uh, it's not too bad look at that pin there that's really annoyed me that's brand new yeah, again, this is one of those ones from Amiga kit. So you've been warned, the pins are pretty bent on the blooming things, even from new. So I've soldered to the bits of pads that are there. Um, you can see I've just scratched off these traces there a little bit. Uh, and I'm just going to reinforce them. So whilst those are actually joined on one half, you know, there's like half a pad. Uh, what I don't want to happen is for them to come off. So uh, I'm going to join up the cane art there. Oh God, join multiple pins together here. Let's try that again. Just get a bit of solder off there. Yeah, on any of these like this where the pads are particularly bad, uh, I will join with wires. So that's it joined there, uh, and then I'll just carefully sort of uh, pull the wire around like that there, snip it and join it on there. So I'll show you one or two of these while I'm doing them. Um, you can see I've got an extended bit of wire here, you know, I've uh, heated it at the end there with some solder, so it's quite long. Uh, and I'm just kind of rooting them to the right place, you know, and then using the solder iron to melt the wire back, uh, and then just wrap it carefully around the pin a few times as you can see uh, yeah so I can't really see what I'm doing from here I need to use a magnification but yeah wrap it around and then solder it on so I think this one is the uh, easy port actually because there's only a couple of reinforcements here not really needed one there and then three of the connections are okay or four or five connections are okay maybe six connections are okay actually and then I just need to just wrap the wire here around the pin yeah, super fiddly to do this. It seriously is. But with a bit of effort, you can see you can wrap it sufficiently around the pin. Oh, it might come off. You might have to then stick it back down again. 
this is the one problem. I really need magnification while I'm doing this. It's uh, it's pretty fiddly to do. This is one of the reasons why I've done these off camera because trying to uh, do this, hold it in the right position, and solder it, certainly from a distance with the camera there. There's a little overhang there on the top. I can perhaps clip that off in a minute, but if we just uh, add a little bit of solder, there we go. And then hopefully it'll stay in position when I heat it. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit that needs trimming off there. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit there. That's gone, I think. Um, and you can see, you know, the pin is wobbling. That's the thing. Uh, and that much wants to go up here to this position. So we'll just uh, trim it off in line with the pin. Just lift it up a little bit so we can uh, melt the end back with some solder. It's not particularly clean and tidy this, but yeah, it's as good as it's going to get, I think. Just put some fresh solder onto the pin below. Push the wire into place. Just add a little bit more solder on the top side there. Oh, it's moving around. Yeah, that's not too bad. We've got a massive piece of solder there that I'm just going to just trim off. Let's just reflow that. Yeah, a bit of a mess, but you know what? It's not the end of the world. So I'll clean up with a toothbrush here now and some IPA. So I booted into sys test there. I think I've got the mouse in the wrong port actually. Let me just try it in the other port. And there might be a missing connection here yet, you never know. Well there we go, the mouse is moving around, that's a good sign. So let's do uh where's it gone now? Mouse joystick. So left button, right button, we don't have a middle button. Oh we do have a middle button on this one. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this because it's an adapter. I've got an adapter with this, it's a PS2. To 9 pin Amiga mouse adapter. Didn't ever need that middle button works, that's amazing. Um, so I'll move the joystick, let's see if this is working. Yeah, left, right, up, down. Yeah, I've only got the one button on this. But that's working. So the good news is this board is now completely repaired. You can see it's got the power socket missing here and all of the chips missing. So despite the fact I fixed this, as you saw in that video, yeah, I had to borrow things off this. I had to remove all the chips and then I needed a power socket. Um, now, it was a bit sacrilege, you could argue, removing it from this Rev 3 board here. But uh, I did need to borrow it from somewhere. You can see no damage, no damage at all. So I just need to get a power socket on there. Now, this has been sat like this, waiting for some chips and waiting for a socket for approximately only six months actually. So on the Patreon uh, Discord channel, Mike sent me this, Barnard Burris I think his uh, name is, a uh, power connector here and it's from an A600 but it's identical. So thank you very very much for this. This means now that I can complete this board so yeah it's not particularly exciting. We'll solder this uh, socket on there. I'll fit the chips here and then we'll go and give it a test. So the board I took this off was a scrap board. It was one that was literally, you know, just beyond. So I was just using it for parts. And the through hole, can you see that? There's a bit of through hole plating, which just means it's not going to easily, or you know, go all the way through the PCB. Uh, so it's it's important just to remove those, clean those up. I think the others are all right. I think there was just one that had that bit of. Oh, there's one there. Can you see this this corner here? It's got a tiny bit of the through hole plating there. Melting the plastic there, trying to get that off. There you go, it's come off now. And if we fit that on now, hopefully, yeah, it's going flush now.
so again thanks to one of my patrons pointing me towards the advert I got a full set of chips here this one's an 8372A I'm not sure that this will work on this rev board it may do if I isolate uh, the uh, PAL NTSC pin so I'll try that we'll try it we'll, uh, I think the pinouts well the pinout is the same I know it is because you can swap an 8370 or an 8371 for the uh, you know this a three seven two a here uh, this will you know work with one mega chip supports one mega chip the a three seven zero is the NTSC uh, version of the original Fat Agnes which only supports half a mega chip and the a three seven one is the uh, UK version so anyway we'll we'll fit that in a sec but you can see I managed to get a full set of chips here uh, so we got uh, a Paula I think Denise Gary a Rom two CAAs and CPU. Uh, I also got a couple of other spare CAAs because if you, you probably haven't seen the video yet in another video I managed to kill two of my CAAs so it was really annoying anyway I had to get some, some spares of those. So with these chips we'll inspect the legs if they look clean which uh, they do actually we'll just stick them straight in. Wear an ESD wrist strap while you're handling chips like this so the semicircle on the silk screen is there and uh, that's pin 1 on the chip I'm not sure if this is kickstart 1.2 or 1.3 now these are single white per sockets, they're not dual white so and if you've seen previous videos you'll know that if you do get uh, these single white sockets it uh, can just give you a bit of a bad connection on one or two of these I am just going to uh, just gently clean with the fiberglass pen here And I'll do it on both sides. Strictly speaking, because it's got single wipe sockets, the outer edge is not so important as the inner edge of these chips here. I was always amazed, and I still am at the size of these uh, CPUs. It's like a giant slab of silicon here. It weighs, you know, they weigh a lot compared to the other ones. It's a nice beefy chip. Uh, pin one is down here on this chip. Again, single wipe, so I'll clean the inside edge on a Rev3 board like this of the chip. So here we have Paula, pin one is over here again. So I'll just try and get one side in and then the other. And then just inspect to make sure those are in properly and look to be. And pin one is here on this side. So let's carefully get Denise in. And again, I think she's gone in okay. So we'll clean up the uh, legs on the CIAs next. Now, uh, yeah, I have got the wrist strap on here. Um, other chips, I'm not so worried about handling generally, uh, for me personally, because, uh, well, you'll know that I don't always wear an ESC wrist strap, I should do, and I've never had a problem. Can you see these legs here, they're bent, I haven't done that, those were already bent, so I need to straighten those out in a sec. But from experience, these CAAs, you just have to look at them the wrong way and they die. The Very, very little ESD is required to kill a CAA, from my experience. So pin one is up this side here again. Yeah, that one's an okay. So as you look at the front of the chip here, it's the ninth pin along here. Uh, and I've, as you can see, it's got a piece of insulation tape right across that pin so the other two pins there on each side should make a connection with the socket uh, yeah it's not very straight that is it at the top there but you know what it's not important this uh, and it's a good idea to do this because you've got a visual indication here that something is uh, going on with that so the pin one notches on the chip there that little dot and it says one here on the PCB so if we just get that into position and then push it in now I'm not sure if that's just peeled off on the underside there, I might need to pull that back out. So if we give that a try, you'll see it's given us a green screen. Now I've just uh, double checked everything, sense checked everything, everything's fine. 
I'm suspecting one of these CIAs is faulty. I'm just going to swap them around and see if the behaviour changes. Let's just try and remove this. There we go, it's coming out pretty easy. Um, we'll put back in the 8372 with that sliver of insulation tape because I am just curious to see will it work on a Rev 3 board. Should do, I think. Put them back in, that's it. Switch it on, and let's see if that works. Yeah, that's boots and Diagra on there. Obviously we need to test it with the Kickstart, but we'll do that in a second. But fingers crossed, that should... No, hang on a minute, that's not working, is it? That didn't look right. So I just want to show you, and you're trying to work out where bad connection is, and I've narrowed, I've narrowed it down here. You can just measure from one side here to the other side. So I'm measuring pin two here. Uh, hang on. Here we've got a join. But if I measure pin one there, that's the one that's the issue. Resistance. So just like you saw me do on the other Rev 3 motherboard, sockets need replacing. This one here needs replacing. The other ones are all okay, but for whatever reason, this one, uh, and I could, looking down into the pins, I'll perhaps show you in a minute, the pins here, the side pins, they kind of look a little bit slanted to a side, almost like the chip's been levered out that way at some point in the past. It may well be that this has had one of those little, um, you know, the things that use turn pin like this. A little module, you know, a socket that plugs onto that, that comes with a wire that feeds to something in the uh, memory expansion slot here. It taps off the extra address line. It may have well have had, it may well have had one of those kind of mods in the past. Anyway, I'm going to get that socket off, and we'll get a dual wipe socket on. So I desoldered all the pins here, just using the desolder pump, just uh, grabbing two or three at once, snapping them off the edges here now. So if the pins come out through the top of the socket, or the bottom of the socket, it's not the end of the world. Having said that, I think they're inserted from the top, so that probably won't happen. But I'm just having a bit of a wobble around here, just to try and assist, freeing it up, press in, like that. It's fairly loose that now, it's just up here somewhere. So the final step here was to wobble it from the other side and I spotted one pin that was not free and just heat it at the same time as you continue to wobble. Pull the iron away, see if it's still wobbling and it was, and then hopefully that should now come off I think. There you go. No through hole plating or anything like that and it looks fine. We've got some discoloration here. This could have been the issue all along. Can you see that? It's like some corrosion starting or some white furriness. So it's interesting, at the earlier part of this video we had this working and then I put it into storage, it didn't get used for a number of months, the chips got removed off it to uh, test another board and then uh, this happened, you know, so I don't know, no idea. It could be something in the environment here that's just got down there but I think actually it's the single wipe sockets that are the problem. Uh, so hopefully this should fix the issue and give us a nice stable board again. So I got the socket on there, we soldered a corner point on each side there, made sure it's nice and straight, which I think it is, it looks pretty straight to me. The one thing I don't like about this socket, it's not got supports at various points in the middle. It's a bit of a cheaper socket, but it's quite hard to try and find a 48 pin socket like that. Yeah, as you can see, that's not too bad. Let's just work out what that is. Yeah, it's a stray bit of solder. 
I'm not sure how that got there. So the other one's on test. This is the first Rev3 board I showed in this series here. Uh, all the other parts, like, I don't know, this must be parts 6 or 7 or 8 now, all the other parts will be listed in the video description down below, and perhaps in a pinned comment. So, this one had the exact same problem. This socket needs removing. The walls, as you saw earlier, uh, some of this stuff underneath wedged in here. Now, I tested this yesterday without that, just sticking the Gary straight in, and it seemed okay. But you know what? I wouldn't want to leave it, because it's had this turn pin in there. Um, that's a, a technique you can use. If you get a 48 pin turn pin socket and stick it in there, it's going to make a very good connection. That would help you avoid replacing the socket. But I'd like to swap it out while I'm here. And there we go, that's two for two. No damage, no through hole plating or anything like that. I'm using the ZX Kim uh, fume extractor here. You can see it's got little bits of uh, fluff and stuff on there. Uh, and I've got added an extra filter to the back of it, so uh, ZX Kim kindly put a filter in there as you can see and added another one on the outside as well, so and it's like a um, charcoal. So it's not only good at absorbing fumes from the air, but as you can see it's absorbing dust and all sorts of things. So Yeah, so take your safety seriously, you don't want to be uh, breathing solder, fumes and flux. There we go, all done. So it did take about 25 minutes-ish from start to finish to do that one. And you can see that pin is different from the others because as I say, I had one of these 48 pin sockets that had a pin missing. So I just borrowed one from a, another socket that had a few pins missing. Sometimes you buy one of those sockets brand new and it can be missing pins and it's super annoying. Anyway, let's go give that a try and I'll show you the status of the one that we've covered in this video, the main board we've repaired. It's, uh, it's been running fine for a long period of time. Previously with the original socket it was only lasting maybe two or three minutes before it would come up with some sort of exception. But as you can see it's been going for ages, round 347. I could not get this to be as stable as I say for more than about two minutes yesterday. So I'm pretty sure that's it and it's been off and on a few times this and I've booted a few things off it, no problems at all. Let's just try the board we've just done. And there we go, all connected up. And as you can see, that worked first time. So I'm very pleased with that. That now means I've got two Ref3 boards here. And they are subtly different, as I'll show you. So the board we covered in part one, you can see the oscillator stuff here. We've got a crystal and a trim cap and some other components that go with that. And on this board, you can see a couple of TTL chips here and a gap there for a crystal. But the board that's been the main focus of this video, you can see this area is empty. Uh, and actually the crystal is up here. I'm not sure whether any of the components that would be here are elsewhere on the board. It doesn't look that way to me. It's just interesting. If you know more about that, why is it optional as to where you can fit that crystal? I mean, there are different types of crystal. This one is, is powered. You know, it'll have a VCC and a ground connection. It's uh, an oscillator that's uh, powered. Whereas the one here is just a two pin device and I think that's why there's a transistor and stuff here as well and some of these other components. So it's curious as to how you could drive the, uh, the clock stuff on this with two different circuits here. I'm not sure why Commodore did that. And again the memory's setting out fine on this board as well. And like the board you saw me test earlier, I uh, tested the serial and parallel on this one as well. So both these boards are fully functional. And a quick look on the underside of the one we focused on. So yeah, this is really scary here, but you know what, it works. It's reliable, it's rock solid. I've been using this for uh, nine months-ish roughly. Uh, you can see the fix we did there to that small trace. It had a new Gary socket here. Again, it looks pretty good. Uh, and of course, the two chips that were smashed off and stuff or damaged here. This one was partially recapped and I marked it accordingly. But uh, as you can see, that looks great. When I say partially recapped, I think it was just these two caps I swapped out here. So you could certainly argue that this second board didn't come out as good as the first board, because the connectors here were a little bit shorter, so it was the same on the floppy drive one, but you know what, this works, and these are from an Amiga, as I showed earlier, they came from uh, you know a chopped up uh, board that I bought from eBay a while back. So special thanks to Stefan Scotte. I'm not sure I pronounced that right, I think he comes from Denmark, he sent me these last year actually just after I lost my job, so uh, it's been really good working on these, they're both marked up as repair 2019, but actually I've done bits of the repair this year, you know the stuff you've seen here I've literally done 
a week or so before this upload. You may think it's not worth saving something like this, a Rev3, but you know what? These are really nice boards and it's an early revision. It's uh, just a really loved part of my collection now, having these two boards is uh, fantastic. So I hope you found the video interesting. Please see the coffee and Patreon links down below if you'd like to support the channel. Just one dollar a month means all the difference really. It means you can continue to do these videos. Thank you very much to all my subscribers, everybody that comments and stuff, and everybody that donates things like this, and especially people that support me on Patreon because that's what keeps things going. Thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next video.